All right, welcome to Industrial Automation Part 2. Today, well, if you haven't seen Part 1, go watch it. It has a lot of the intro stuff, a lot of the basic stuff, which we're not going to talk about in this one because we're going into the Dropbox and Sorter setup. And we're going to go right into it. I got all the stuff from last time uh, that we don't really need anymore. Now, I want to give you a, just an overview concept of the Dropbox and sorter system. And let's just make a very simple for version of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a box here. Dropbox, just might as well label them. Then we'll get some military storage. So, you have storage in your base, right? Maybe this. This is, this is kind of our smelting box from last episode. So, for the time being, we're gonna kind of ignore that and leave it its own system, if you will. You're going to hear me refer to these kind of things as systems a lot. And uh, the closed loop furnace system is its own system that is closed. It's kind of closed off from the world. We'll include it into the rest of the world soon and it'll no longer be a closed loop. But first, we want to get storage in our base, naturally, right? I don't know where we're going to put storage in this base. I haven't really, th I haven't really thought this through. Or you can put each box in its own little cubby and do the meta four thing. That's fine. But when I do this, I like to put these boxes in a bunker somewhere usually so I'm gonna show you that all right so we've expanded a couple squares added a couple shelves and we're just gonna line up boxes here to use for the example all right so what we've got here is a whole bunch of boxes just as tightly packed as I could get them in these two so we end up with uh, about 14 boxes and get another one here actually and make it 16 and two squares so that's about as compact as you can get this is often what you want with this type of system and it's I, I love this I don't know there's something about this little tightly packed uh, concise loot loot area like a like a nugget of loot but the problem right now is like uh, they all need adapters right so we put an adapter on one but now can we reach it uh, not so there's some issues there that's why you can't do these front boxes till later because you uh, can't reach the back ones. So you gotta get all the back ones set up first, which is still 10. That's enough to get started. I also put a couple over here, putting all these adapters on them. So it's gonna take a chunk of metal for all these boxes and stuff that, and all these adapters. And we also want a drop box. And usually you want this wherever you enter your base. You see I've closed off this top. Let's reopen it. All right, so Wherever you enter your base, you probably want a drop box or some, some convenient spot. Drop box. I don't know. I, I guess I got to make a sample second floor. Let me have it right here. All right. Drop box. Hooray. All right. So all you really need here is this drop box. To take whatever goes into it and put it sort of into these boxes down here accordingly now let's get a very simple version of this going just to start where it's just single conveyor single box all right so we just want to move loot from one box to the other well we take the output and go to the input of the box and we take this input and it's the drop box is the input see where it turns green that old trick you don't get one do some quick improv if you have to. Piping's not super important. There's a few things about it, but basically just go wide and try not to block things you're planning on building. So that one, there's the out there. Um, obviously this needs powered on. At this point, you might need to upgrade your power a little bit uh, to some extent. We're just gonna throw in a uh, splitter. I like splitters for reasons. Combiners are fine too, but splitters have some advantages as well that I don't think are well known. I don't really want to talk about them too much here uh, just because I'll get on a side track. But just know that basically if you end up with splitters, you end up saving a lot of power. But we want to keep uh, this internal loop system on its own drop. So we'll just keep that like that. And that's all still hooked up. And we want to put this other new system we're creating on its own power too. Now, in theory, you could daisy chain all your conveyors and then figure out your other devices. However you want to do it's fine. Not really about electric. I'm just kind of throwing it together for now to show you the industrial stuff. But we do got to power this on somehow. So if you just turn this on, 
with no filters, any item, it's just going to move everything without any care. It's just going to say whatever goes in the box, I move. So if we throw this in there, maybe this and this, maybe a little bit of this, and maybe a little bit of this. Sure, just anything you throw in there. Um, let's get a stack of various ore. All right, so we'll throw those in, throw that in. Anything you throw in, you can just, in fact, you can just be like, all right, just get rid of my inventory. Throw it all in there. All right, since it's set to any item like that, it's just gonna move everything. Now this in itself is pretty handy because when you think about it, there we go. Sometimes it's really nice to not have to move your entire loop up and down loop floors and around your base just to get stuff deep into your core where it's safe because these tubes can go through doors uh, without any problem. They can't go through walls. Obviously, I'm sure you know that, but still. Now, this is just like a Dropbox system, but it's not an auto sorter yet. So how do you turn it from Dropbox that just transfers from one box to the other into an entire auto sorter? Okay, basically, you need a bunch of splitters to split to different conveyors, and you need to start putting filters on these. That's it in a nutshell. So let's do it. We take some industrial splitters, and of course we're gonna need conveyors. Now on this server, it doesn't actually use up items when you place them, but I'm just gathering a count for reference. And of course, we already got the adapters placed. Now you might see at this point, this is a bit of a metal sink. So to set this up, it does take 3K metal usually, 4K sometimes. It does take, and, you know, and that may or may not be a lot to use, but you need to be in a position where you have the frags to spare if you wanna set this sort of thing up and make this base nice. And that's why it turns into a late game thing. All right, we got all these boxes, we got all adapters. Basically anything we wanna sort, we wanna put in, conveyor next to so this is gonna get interesting I'll uh, first we're just gonna sort by category so we're gonna go for 13 all right we got one already right here two three four five we're gonna use these two just get these wherever we can next to the box we need to build one last thing before we set this all up and that is the industrial splitter setup so each of these can supply well, they got three outputs, so we can supply two conveyors, and then we have one last to go to the next splitter. You can also do this as one big wall um, of all of these things in one place, and then just run the tubes accordingly. Keep that in mind. One for those two. And we got one extra, which we can use for expansion later. Or we can just close it off if we're not planning on adding more. But it's good practice to keep up with this style and leave the last one open when you're all done for later expansion. Now the drop box is going to this conveyor. We no longer want it to go to this conveyor. We want it to bring, come in to the first splitter. And we'll just start right here. We'll start right here. So this will now go to the drop box. All right, now you just want to hook up each of these kind of as you intended when you place them. One there, and we might as well hook these to the boxes while we're at it, just out to the end there. One can go there. And now this third one expands to the next. And then we do it again. One and two, three to the next. Just rinse and repeat. And third one to the final expansion. You can also color code these pipes. I didn't think to do that right now. I usually don't because I don't care. Once it's hooked up, it just sits stationary anyway. All right, expanded the last one. Now two and three aren't used. That's fine. We can hook them up later. We got room for expansion. Now, of course, we need to wire these. Uh, we already got a power drop going to the first one. We'll just daisy chain them all together. Input, pass through. Input. These all take one watt. They don't use any power while they're powered off. With one exception. They do use power when powered off if you're using electrical branches. Which is the reason I often don't like electrical branches. They still use power even when the things aren't on or hooked up. Oh, but, yep, just another rinse and repeat operation here. 
And that's it. They are all... They all have power. I think. Did we miss something? We missed something here. Some of them don't have power. This input here. You now, oftentimes, uh, you might notice something's not working. And it's usually just hooked up to them wrong. This is an odd one to get to. Okay. Now they should all be blinking red. Which basically means they're ready to be turned on. All hooked up to that drop box. And we'll start sorting things. Now, with no filters on them, they're just going to try to pull everything and it's just going to be chaos. It's going to look like this box, basically. I mean, just take all this stuff out of here. So um, with this initial setup, we're just going to categorize them. We just want categories because it has the conveyors have this cool thing of categories and it's super sweet. So that's the most basic way. Let's go. This one will be our actually let's go clothing. Let's start with clothing. This is our clothing one. All right. Turn it on. We'll now sort clothing and clothing only. This one, let's say this is our weapons. So we take the weapons category. There are 13 categories, as I mentioned before. Turn it on. All right, this one will be ammo. Cool. Turn it on. And we're not changing anything else about this filter. Just any item, ammo, no max or anything. That just means grab everything you can, basically, of that category, which is what we want in this initial case. And this one, we're going to say medical. And another thing I'd like to do, you don't have to do this, but... Look, just start color or uh, skin in the boxes accordingly. You know, it's kind of a cool thing to do. Armor trunk. This one was weapons, so we'll just go with like the gunpoint box. This one we need a category. Let's go with uh, construction. Keep going down the line with every category. I don't know, maybe we want a food box. Yeah, food is a category here. Traps box. Uh, and this one, I guess, you know, there's also electrical and resources. Okay, resources is an interesting one because there is a lot and there are big stacks. So it kind of needs to be handled in a special way, but we'll worry about that later. What other categories we got? We got uh, components, naturally. Yes, components is huge. And there was another thing, bun. Kind of a weird category of special stuff. There should be 13. If we got 13 boxes hooked up, we might be done, which maybe we do at this point. Oh, there's other. Don't forget other. And then I think we got one extra. We're just going to leave this one extra off right now. That's fine. You can you can have one hooked up and just leave it off. Uh, and that means basically when you figure out later something you want to bring in or change, you have another slot ready to go to a change filtering. So now we've got this big configuration area, I'll call it. And usually you want this somewhere deep, well-protected, and hidden in your base because when you put stuff in your Dropbox, it's going to go to this, in theory, most secure area. Now, Dropboxes can go anywhere. You can have them way outside your compound if you want, somewhere like out here. It's, uh, this will still work as a Dropbox. So you can move loot from pretty far, in theory. And I just want to show you that you can daisy chain Dropbox. Just take the out on your new one. Type it to the end on the other one. So you can have drop boxes all over the place with just another box and an adapter. No more conveyors needed, no more power needed to add additional drop boxes. That's huge. So as many drop boxes as you want for no power. It was just, that's amazing. It's just the sorting, each sort takes one rust watt, which is not a big deal. We're up to 17 watts here, and that's with a furnace. And um, a splitter, and uh, I think a bunch of 14 conveyors on. So even that, this can still almost run off of just one solar panel. That's another just amazing thing about this. Is we don't even need like a windmill yet. Um, we could probably get away with two solar panels for the rest of the wipe with this going. All right, but anyway, that's a side rant. That's just something I love about this. Let's get some items and let's throw them in the drop boxes. Well, throw all that in. Okay, so notice what doesn't get sucked in. There's no category for these. I don't know if that's intentional, but these standard placeables, boxes, tier threes and stuff, they don't have a category. I don't know why that is, that's a rust thing, but the way you bring them in then, if they don't have a category, you the best way to do it, I think, is to just custom bring them in, because there's no placeables. But you can individually say, all right, I'll take tier threes. All right, I'll take refineries. 
All right, and then you turn it on and it will start bringing just those in. Which is kind of important. We're doing some custom filtering. Okay, so we should see that everything we threw in the box goes in the right place. We threw some AKs in. Nice. We threw some ammo in. No, we didn't throw any ammo in. We threw some clothing in. It went to the clothing. We didn't throw any meds in. There's some of that stuff. So actually, what I usually end up doing, actually, is I take this construction box and I add, like, the workbenches. Because you can have up to 12 things on this. And that way, you don't, you know, you go where they think they should go, even though they're not in that category. So there's some items that are just like that. And they're mostly these placeables. All these placeables seem to be like that. They're just not in a category or whatever the category they're in is not on these filters. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong on that from the comments, anyone, because that's uh, how I've always seen it. I think we have shown mainly what we wanted to show. Uh, you'll notice a few things, though. And this is kind of important, I guess. Wherever we had that war going, all these resources. Real problem, though. This, you don't, this is going to take in wood and stone, and this box is going to be a fool immediately. So what we actually want to do is we want to dedicate these resource boxes. We don't want a, a resource category uh, necessarily. Oops, I'm accidentally sucking in everything now. Let's turn that off. I brought in all these extra. Oh, we missed tools. There's a tools category, right? Tools. I don't have one yet. Let me know if you caught that earlier. Okay, we missed tools. Okay, let's turn this on now. Boom. But tools encompasses uh, all the stuff that you saw coming in the sofa box. Uh, the hammer, mining stuff. I guess a lot of this stuff too. Okay, so what comes in as tools? All right, we've changed this to a toolbox. All right, so let's go to our drop box way out here. Fill it all in there, see what happens all get sucked in except for the stuff that doesn't have a category like these furnaces so yeah you have to either add in the important ones as you want like the workbench if you want to accept workbenches maybe add it to your construction and you can add up to uh, nine more items so basically if you see anything left in these drop boxes that seems important like the refinery uh, you can just go in your config and add it to one of these later Another thing you can do is you can just add to the array. Now that's really important. You can add to the array of each of these. Say you get so many guns that this is overflowing with guns. All right. You can now assume these are in a good place in your base and not just scattered. And let's go get our wrench tool, which should be with our electrical stuff, conveniently sorted. And also we should be able to find an adapter in here, conveniently sorted. And in our tools box, we should be able to find this conveniently sorted. Say you want to expand the gun boxes, all right? Two more gun boxes, because we've just got so many guns rolling in. You just take the, the out from this box and just daisy chain the new boxes in. And that's how you add more. Oh, that tap failed. Sometimes it'd be like that. Something I haven't mentioned before, but sometimes the, the taps fail and you just have to start over and it's kind of a little glitchy or something. Maybe you found so many SARS, it's ridiculous, you know? Sometimes it'd be like that when you come back from a run, you know, you get a whole load of stuff. All right, but we've got so many guns accumulated that the first box is totally full. And the second one has started to fill. The third one has partially started to fill. And yeah, that's how you just add more. So you can do that with anything. You get too many components, you just tack on a few more boxes and it works fine. No more power needed. That's the huge thing. You can expand this as necessary. Once you got these main categories set up, you can just say this category is overflow and add another box for it. Yeah, everything's sorted. This is the full auto sorting system. This, be the, this resource becomes a problem. If you just let it take in resources without any regard for anything, other than the resources, it will overflow with stone and wood so fast. So the problem here is, well, you can keep adding more. You can say, okay, we're up the resource box eight or nine or whatever. And that's actually fine. There's nothing particularly wrong with that. But what I like to do is just split up the resources in a little better of a way and just not even use this resource category at all. Uh, so I'm just going to show that. It'll just be an example of how to start splitting off custom things that make sense for your build. 
All right, so let's say uh, we decide we want a stone box and a wood box and a, and then a, like a sulfur box. And then we also have to decide what are we gonna do with these other resources? And I'll give you my standards for that. Uh, cloth, cloth goes with the components, add it. You're gonna wonder where does my scrap go? Scrap goes with the components, add it. Where does my leather go? Leather goes with the components, add it. I think that's the best spot for those. And now it'll just take those in in the future. Um, there's more to it. You, uh, I, I'm thinking of another feature right now, but I, it's too soon to reveal it. Like this is in the wrong spot. There's a way to have it auto-correct that. I'm not gonna show it now, it's too advanced. It's just make things confusing. But for now, it's just you throw stuff back in the Dropbox, it resorts. So this is what ends up happening basically with these resources is they have their own box is the point. So uh, you do what you want to do with, with that. Um, but essentially you're going to need more power to sort that out too, because you need a conveyor for each of these. Now uh, it's one watt to do this, but I think it's usually worth, and you can kind of combine them up to some extent, or you can just, if you want to save the wattage, you can just keep adding more resource boxes and let them be the, the chaos that they are. That ends up being fine too. But I personally like to have a box dedicated to each resource, uh, like so. And now this is where it comes in where you would further this expansion, where you want to say, okay, we take our output three, we got two new taps, we're gonna need another thingamajigger. So you can end up spending a good bit of your time setting this up uh, if you haven't pre-thought it out. Once, if you've pre-thought it out, then usually you're a uh, little ahead and don't have to keep redoing it. I would just say pre-plan it, stick to the standards the best you can. We need power on these things. We get that from the electrical box as well. And we take the final one that didn't have its pass-through hooked up. Let's hook up the new ones. So it can be this easy to make additions. That's kind of the point. Then make the changes. Set this to wood and literally just wood only. Okay, so these should now work. And they should now get stone and wood and charcoal into those. Okay, so let's just make a quick example of that. Keep in mind that if you add something on one, you want to take it off the other. You don't want to have it multi everywhere. That's just going to create chaos in the long run. Now, in some ways it may not matter actually, which we'll get into later, but we don't have the pooler hooked up yet. So without the pooler, it actually matters a lot because things are going to be scattered because this is still designed in a way where it's made for a person to walk in the door and be able to find the loot they're looking for based on the box labels. So this is what I would call the open sorter system where the boxes are open to player engagement. Now there is a uh, another version of this, which I kind of alluded to earlier that we're going to talk about next. So how do you get stuff out of these boxes without having to go visit them? And this is going to segue into a lot of things like the industrial factory, um, where you know, create systems such as late in the wipe, you throw stuff in your Dropbox, maybe from a run, components, a bunch of various things, and internally in your base, it will take whatever it needs out of that stuff and craft stuff that you want made. You can automate that all custom, and I will show you how we will get there. But this has been a big step, just getting this set up right here it is pretty huge. Uh, you notice it's flexible. I set it up. Some things are set in stone, like you basically got to have one splitter for two uh, conveyors, like that's standard. You gotta have one of these little adapters on every box. You need a big chunk of metal. Uh, the way you sort stuff, you can customize. The categories are very handy to get started, but start splitting up the resources later and add on additional boxes as necessary if you get an overflow of stuff, like with weapons, ammo, etc. You're gonna wanna custom sort a lot of things. Tools are always a problem area for me because they take in C4 and uh, satchels naturally, which I don't think belong there. I think that goes in the ammo box personally or in a special boom box of its own. 
So usually I end up splitting that off and I get rid of the tool category altogether and just accept just jackhammers and like high tier tools only. So the way you would do that is you say, all right, get that off of here. This box is for jackhammers and chainsaws and maybe you put a other couple high tier things on there. But now it no longer takes in these. And you could say ammo box, you should be taken in C4. Let's put C4 on that. So now it'll sort there. And you'll want to do the same with satchels and you'll notice other stuff. Be aware of what's not taken in and consider where you would want that to go. So it, it kind of evolves over time, if you will. I'll just show one more ex example here. Explosives is always a thing for me, because where, where do they go? You throw in explosives, they're considered a resource in this game, so they sort to the resource category. So they're not going to go anywhere right now. I usually just end up putting them on this, the boom box. Let's put explosives on there. So you're going to have some things like that, but you will have it nice and custom configured for how you like to play after a day or two, and your wipe just becomes so much fun at that point because you it's you got optimal base strategies just evolving naturally and that'll come with the rest all right thanks for watching let me know if you have questions you can catch me live streaming on twitch at uh bite pro 17124 or uh, ask me questions here i'll keep producing videos but uh yeah as the master of all this automation stuff i'm happy to teach you guys self-proclaimed master um I've learned so many tricks. I'm happy to share them and get this out there and uh, hopefully get you guys to the next era. All right. See you in the next episode where we're going to talk about a very cool pooler system that uh, segues into setting up the rest of the stuff in the base, basically. All right. Peace out.